Trillions of cicadas are getting ready to take flight on the East Coast. And yes, you heard that correctly, trillions. At first you might think, oh, that's awful or disgusting. But as Ginger Z explains in this week's It's Not Too Late, we should celebrate one of nature's greatest marvels. Hi, I'm Ginger Z, and it's not too late. And I have a warning for you. The cicadas are coming. The loud, the plentiful, the awesome aphid is just weeks from emerging. And can we just get one simple fact out of the way? It is not a locust. And here's something so fascinating. This particular breed uses the base of trees, the root system, and they are underground for 17 years. It's quite a spectacle. It's, it's one of the natural wonders of the world. And, uh, you know, a lot of people always call in or write into us about how do I get rid of them and, and all that. And the best thing I can say is just sit back and, and appreciate it, if not enjoy it for what it is. You can't really get rid of them and you probably don't want to. They're a natural part of our forests. And while some of you might be dreading that invasion or maybe you've seen one of these before, well, this is good news because it actually means that our ecosystem's doing well. I spoke with a guy named John Cooley. He's a cicada expert and he runs the Cicada Project at the University of Connecticut. He was telling me that the cicada's been around for millions of years and they've adapted to all different types of changes in the climate. This female took about 30 minutes to emerge from her nymphal skeleton. However, they have never seen the rapidity of change that we have happening right now because of us. So they really don't know how the cicada is going to react. We're talking about something that happens on the scale of 150 years. That's unprecedented. And how they will respond to it, it's really not enough time for them to adapt in an evolutionary sense. You're talking, you know, for cicada, 150 years, you're talking less than 10 generations. So that isn't much. Um, what'll happen to them? It's a good question. So hopefully I've endeared you a bit to the cicada. And if so, and you suddenly care, it's really easy to help. All insects eat sustainable foods, plant some flowers, don't use pesticides, and don't kill them. And I promise it's not too late. I guess I'm kind of strange because I'm actually looking forward to this cicada swarm. <laughs> I've never seen a plague of bugs, I'm curious. A uh, nice thing about the cicadas is they, they don't kill crops. They, they feed off of the sap from trees. Uh, the only issue is in a swarm situation they can kill young trees. If they can overfeed and they lay their eggs in the trees themselves, so. I'm not even sure if they have a preferred tree. Or if it's just whatever. Um, I've seen their exoskeletons on tree trunks before. I'm not really sure. It's been a while. I'm not really sure what kind of tree they're on. I'm thinking either maple or oak. Judging by how I remember the bark looking, it was very rough and jagged. I'm not actually sure. But I'm kind of curious of what a cicada storm would look like. Or swarm. Or sound like. <laughs> they're pretty loud. But they're ugly bugs. They're, they're kind of freaky, so if I had one on me, it would probably freak me out. But... Or is that they're, they're harmless to humans, so they don't bite or anything. So there's no issue with that. <laughs> but I'm not sure if it'll get this far north. And it's basically just south of the border where it's predicted to be, so... It's possible they could come up this far. Uh, depending on if they cross the lakes or not. So, just... Uh, horrible day today. And it's a whole... Lonely two degrees out there. It's windy as crap. And it's overcast. It's very, very dull. And there's snowflakes falling. <laughs> so we got quite a bit of rain overnight. Uh, it, was, it was pretty heavy at times. I don't recall if we got any 
actual thunderstorms or anything, but you know, it was, I heard rain hit my window off and on pretty much the whole night, and it came down pretty heavy at times. So today everything's kind of broken up, but like I say, it, it's more snow than rain right now. Uh, another day that I just wouldn't go out if it wasn't for Timmy's roll-up. That's what kind of set me in motion for today. I'm out later than I normally am anyways, but... So, I had a video come out. And you'll see it where it says Mercalli. And then video analysis required. Uh, that was a screw up on my part. <laughs> That's part of the image stabilization. Once I apply it to the video, I have to actually, you know, perform the analysis on it, and then that goes away. Well, apparently I missed a part. Uh, it was just a short part, so I didn't bother with it. Uh, normally, I would render the video, I'd take care of whatever's wrong, and then render the video again. There's just I'm so behind right now, it's just, there's just no time for it. And yesterday's video, I screwed up again, but it's nothing major. Some people might not even notice it. At the beginning when I'm talking, doing my, my intro talk here, you'll hear an echo. Uh, the way I'm doing the audio right now, so it's nice and clean and you can actually hear what I'm saying. Is I separate the audio from the video and I process the audio separately and then I stick it back in. Well, when I did that, I forgot to mute the original volume or the original audio, so you're hearing both. <laughs> so that's why you're hearing an echo. Oops. Again, I just I don't have the time to redo it right now. So I guess that's all that's really going on today. Um, I have my plastic bag handy in case of an emergency situation I have to cover up my camera and if it starts raining hard. So like I say, right now I'm not too worried about it. It's mostly snow. And I'm replacing this camera anyways. So I've, I've got one picked out already. It's shipped directly from Amazon. So if something happens and I have to return it, it's nice and easy, nice and quick. And I should receive it pretty quick. I don't have to wait two or three months. I found an original one, I think it was 70, $79, I think it was, which is uh, cheaper than I've ever paid for them, but when I look at the picture, I can see it's only got an inch and a half screen on the back, which tells me it, it's an early model, it's a really old one, which explains why it's so cheap. So I kept looking, and I found one that was 90-something, and it's got the full screen on the back. It's also shipped directly from Amazon, so that's the one I'll be going with. And I can't remember. There's no memory card with it. If something else was different, I can't remember. So they didn't throw in a bunch of extras, which is probably why they got the cheaper price on it. So if I can pick one up under 100 bucks, I'll be happy. So that's the one I'll probably go with. And hopefully get that problem solved. <laughs> Well, days like today, being dull, and the possibility of rain, this is the day I need this backup camera to actually work for me. So hopefully, all goes well. Yesterday it worked fine. So we'll see what happens. Everything's charged up. Both cameras are fully charged. <sighs> I don't know. I yeah, the snowflakes are getting bigger. Okay, let's go out and get this trip done.
Oh, it is not nice out there. Ooh, that wind is crazy. So, and looking at the rivers, they're really not as high as I expected them to be. With all the rain we had last night, maybe tomorrow they'll be up again. So I went and did the fur trail. Yeah, I stopped and took a break. And while I was taking a break, I got looking at my fenders again. And... <laughs> it's cold out the camera's cord here doesn't want to move. I got mentioning before how this one... This fender actually seemed higher than this one. And I got thinking, because of this, I got... Maybe it's bent upwards. And that might be why... So if this was where it's supposed to be, then maybe it would be out further. But, like I said, the trailer hitch is centered, and I turned the lights on so you can actually see. There's three lights on this side, four lights on that side, so. And the tail light, you can see, is, is right dead center. So the trailer hitch is centered, so it's definitely the fender that's off. Um, and you can kind of see... The lever, brake release lever on the motor is also, so this whole thing is shifted to the side. So this has nothing to do with the transaxle itself. I noticed this before I even changed it. Because the transaxle is attached to the same frame that the fender is attached to. So it's not attached to the transaxle itself, it's the frame. So, one way or another... This whole fender thing is off to the side. Like I said, there's only one place to attach it. It's not adjustable, so why it's off center, I have no idea. Not a clue. <clears throat> but I got thinking about that. You know, with the one fender being higher than the other, I thought maybe, maybe. But both have been both fender braces have been. Uh, fixed multiple times <laughs> so maybe I don't know but they connect to the fenders in one specific place so there really isn't a way for them to be off I, it makes no sense to me I don't get it but like I guess I it doesn't affect the monster at all so it's just an appearance thing I don't really know and with this tire sticking out a little bit, you know, I do get a little bit of splash up, but that's okay. I guess I suppose that's okay. So I went and did the fur trail. I actually just kind of wanted to sit by the river there, because I figured I would be uh, sheltered from the wind. It, it's pretty windy. And I decided while I'm there anyway, so I might as well see if I can do that trail. And, well, it was accessible. Uh, no tree branches on the trail like I expected. The bins have moved again, but I can get through, so I'm, just, I'm not going to complain about it. Look at that crap. That's not what I want to see right now. But, I don't expect any kind of accumulation. Uh, it's, it's above freezing, uh, we might get something today, tonight, whatever, because overnight it'll drop below, but, and again, tomorrow it'll all melt, so, yeah, it's that time of year, you know, <laughs> it's still March, it's almost the end of March, uh, I'm surprised we normally get a good snowstorm or two, you know, in March, but this year that didn't happen. So, but, it's still spring, it'll be spring until June, anything can happen between now and then, so we'll have to wait and see, um, there's another cool, I got looking at the 14 day forecast, <clears throat> there's another cool down period coming, and then double digit temperatures, low double digit, but it looks pretty consistent after that, 12 and 13. Oh, I'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, anyway, I'm cold. 
Um, I, I never finished my story. <laughs> so after I got by the bins, they all had bins at one end this, this time for some reason. I don't know why they took the others away. But it's just really super muddy into there. And for the most part, it wasn't too bad. And then I got into part, and the monster started slowing down. I was like, nope, I don't want to get stuck in this. So I kind of went off onto the grass. But, yeah, we'll see. I don't plan on going down there a whole lot until things dry out. Because once I get the monster all cleaned off, you know, I'm not going to want the mud splattering all over. So, I'll you know, kind of restrict the amount that I actually dry through there. So, okay, that's it this time. I gotta go in and get warm. That snow hitting my face is... It's, it's got ice in it, so it, it hurts. <laughs> so, that's all I got for this one.